morning. Thanks for being on time. <laughs> um, yeah, welcome to Jane Beyond. Um, it's our fifth Jane Beyond now. And um, I will not make it too long, so I have a, a couple of things to say. Um, so I'll start. Um, for the J factor, um, people doing the J factor be in the room 10 to 8. Um, if you will practice your um, J factor after coffee break, you can do it in this room. This afternoon, coffee break afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Um, if some people decide to present something very spontaneous, ask Brian. Um, so was what we have now. So we have cancelled one session. It's Joomla in the box. And um, so that's in. It was supposed to be in room. Oh no! In one of the rooms. So um, so and then uh, please, when you when you go to sessions, be on time. If you are attendee or if you are sponsor, please be on time. For the speakers, start on time so that we don't have delays and, and have problems with, with, uh, uh, with all the other sessions um, behind this. So for the JOSCA the voting, after, oh, there's Thomas. For the JOSCA votings, uh, you get your, your voting um, sheets when you go out, then you got a lanyard also because you have one, but they are, all, are only delivered, I think, five minutes ago from Red Component. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to UPS? I don't know. Um, so tomorrow and Sunday, where uh, there are more people here in the, um, in the ho uh, hotel, so we have also a breakfast in house six. So there is breakfast here, as it was today, upstairs. And there is also a breakfast in house six. So wherever you are, maybe when you're in house six, it's easier to fall in this room. Um, so I'd like to say thank you to our sponsors. Um, you see them here on this uh, roll-ups. Um, what I always say, buy their products, buy their service, talk to them. Um, they make it possible that we can do this conference for a small fee, I think, for a three-day conference. Um, so we have um, one guy here from Ubicon. Where do I see? <laughs> Get him in. So because... Oh, this one. Um, go, go to him with, the, with your badge, and you get a free Yubi key. <laughs> I think surrounded from a lot of business and, and marketing messages, so be prepared. Um, good. Um, so we. We have, we have two, um, two areas. I think we will do most of the stuff here. We have coffee here, we have all here. But we have two session rooms uh, in, in house two. Okay, 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 good. So, um, I'm, I'm a little bit interested in, in um, who are new people. So, people they were before on four Jane Beyonds, please sit down. When you were on four Jane Beyonds, sit down, that's good. Okay, when you were on three Jane Beyonds, please now. Okay. When you were on two. Okay. When you were on one, now? 
Yeah, one before. So, so these are, this are the people that are new to James Bond. That is great. Really great to have so many. How do you do? Okay. Five minutes. So in great Jane Bond tradition, we're starting off, starting off with an apology. Um, Michael Babka, um, unfortunately, is not here. A typical American, he left it till too late to get his passport. Um, a passport is scheduled to arrive with him today. So uh, he's not coming, so um, instead you get to listen to me. So um, I was going, I did, it, who, who was in Jumade France last weekend? Okay, you may have noticed um, the hair has gone a little bit. Um, it, it was an attempt to get it short like Michael, but um, you know, he's, in, he's only just left the US Army, so he's used to a, a quarter inch buzz cut. Uh, he did show me a photo, he's told me he's let it grow. It's now a half inch buzz cut. Uh, so I didn't go quite that far. So welcome to Jane Beyond. Um, as you know, the theme for Jane Beyond this year is investing in our future. And uh, the too long don't listen version of this presentation um, is all about what, what we've done in the past investing in Joomla, what we can do in the future, and how it happens. So what have we done in the past? We've spent a lot of time working on CMS, the framework, the platform, and now the issue tracker as well. So in the CMS, over the last few years, we've had two major releases five minor releases, but being driven by the contributors. Every release, every patch release has been packed with new features. There's always been something new there for everybody, not just for coders, for developers, for designers, for content creators. Every version, every patch release has always had something new for people to work on. The platform is a little bit different. The platform was really only in active development for 2011-2012. The concept of it was that you would be able to rapidly develop new applications on the core of the CMS. And we also spent quite a bit of time integrating libraries the, for third-party services like the Google Maps API and stuff like that. But the reality is that the PHP world has moved on. We were kind of a little bit ahead of the curve, and the curve moved quicker. And so now people are working on the framework. So what's the difference between the platform and the framework? The framework is standalone packages. So that means that some of those packages will be written by people in the Joomla community, and other packages will be wrapped and using the industry standards, the best practice package for that particular PHP function. So whether that's the file system function or a Google API, it might be written by us, it might be written by somebody else. And it's all about standalone packages, which also means that other people in the PHP world can use a package that's been created by the Joomla community in their Drupal application. develop and innovate much faster. Michael wrote modernized code. Um, don't think you need to say any more. We've always been leading the way with MVC, with object-oriented programming. Everybody else is catching up with us, and now we can work together to make sure that we're all pushing it forward. Now, the issue tracker um, is something new. A lot of, uh, Joomla code sucks. Yeah? Uh, no, sorry. JoomlaCode.org sucks. <laughs> um, if you've actually tried to use the issue tracker on JoomlaCode.org, it's pretty bad. Um, it's impossible to search. It doesn't allow you to uh, interface with Git and various other things. So we've come up with the issue tracker to address all those issues. Um, it's not formally launched yet, and there's still a, you know, some more development work to be done. Um, hopefully, we're going to be doing some of that here at Jane Beyond. The main thing that it lets, one of the main things it lets us do, 
is it allows people who have both got development skills and non-development skills to contribute equally, to make it a lower interface, a lower barrier of entry. And it also is working as a great showcase of what the framework can do. Because the issue tracker is not Joomla the CMS, it's Joomla the framework. Uh, it uses different presentation layer, different file system, and it and uses the GitHub libraries to completely interface with GitHub. So if you create an issue on the issue tracker, the new one, it automatically creates it on GitHub. If you go to GitHub and create it, something there, it automatically creates it on the issue tracker. So no more, please create an issue on Joomla code when you submit to GitHub, and no more doing the creating on GitHub when you do the Joomla code. So that's a lot of stuff that's happened in the past. We've also, over the last few years, there's been a lot of time and effort gone into documentation, the internationalization of the project, greater accessibility with the leadership, and greater marketing effort. And we've seen the efforts and the effect that that's had. Of course, that's an ongoing thing. We can always do better, and we can always do more. But we've seen how that has had an effect, and now we need to make sure that we put that investment, that time, that effort into the code as well. So the PLT have been listening to the community and to listen to what people have been talking about. How can we improve? How can we change? Where can we invest our time and our energy better? maintenance and support, and how long Joomla itself, a version, is alive for. And for me personally, one of the biggest issues that I've had for a long time in Joomla is we've never had a plan. It's kind of, if people contribute it, great, it'll go in. If they don't, well, they don't. It never happens. We don't have a plan. And so those are the things that the PLT have been looking at, and hopefully they're addressing. So they now have a development strategy which previously was what was called long-term stable and short-term stable release. It was a kind of a four-year life cycle for a major version, but not formally. And it was specific only to the CMS work. Now, every release is defined as stable. Yeah, there's no more long-term support, short-term support, only use this one if you want to be cutting edge. You know, only use this one if you're brave. That was a stupid thing to say. It created the wrong message. Every version was great. So we're now saying that every release is a stable release. Every major version now has a guaranteed minimum life cycle of four years. And that could be longer. And I'll come back to that later. And this development strategy and this approach is applying across the project. So any code that is created for the project it all applies to everything, not just the CMS. So what about the release frequency? Well, previously, we had... ...being released whenever. And what do I mean whenever? We've switched to pr truly using semantic versioning. And one of the things of semantic versioning is that the numbers only increment when you lose compatibility. And so the object of the exercise is to keep it as long as possible yeah, and not tie us in to specific times and dates for those releases. Be so previously, we had an issue by having these specific times and dates that we had to do this six monthly release of a big rush to get new features committed in the last weeks before we were scheduled to release. If anyone was involved in the release of 3.2, there were more new features waiting to Joomla 3.2 than I think any... We're not going to go in for another six months or, or nine months. So that created a big rush. It also made it very difficult for the non-developers to test because there were no, it wasn't easy for them to apply those patches and to see it and to test it in the real world. It was something developers could do, but it wasn't something that the regular user could do. And that's where you get the problems 
Because a lot of developers, in my experience, Joomla lives in their IDE, their Eclipse or PHP Storm. Where in the real world, Joomla lives in a web browser. So you can really only test it in a web browser with real contents. And it's great having a developer testing the code and make sure it passes their tests in their, ed in their editor, but unless you test it in the real world, it's not real testing. And it made it very difficult for those regular users who can do the real testing to actually do it because of this rush. And we could never test updates because we could only test an update when we had a beta release to update to. You couldn't use the Joomla updater to do continuous updates. So there have been times over the years where the updater failed because we never really tested it. Because it was the only time you could test it was 24 hours before it was released. And the message would go out, there's a, be there's a beta you can do an update for. Six people test it. Oh, it works. Great. Release. So now that's all changed. We have something called release branches now. It's no longer just committing to master on GitHub. Yeah? We can commit to versions on GitHub. That means that we could actually say it's going to go in 3.4, commit it. We could also say, no, it's going to wait till 3.5, and we can commit it to that as well. We don't have to rush everything in at once. We've got a lot better at creating tools that people can test the software with for all levels of developers, whether that's continuing continuous integration tools like Travis and Jenkins, or unit testing, or if you've not seen it, Michael Babka wrote an awesome Joomla component called Compatch Tester, which works like any Joomla component, looks at the GitHub patches, lets you apply them, you can test it, and then you can uninstall them afterwards. So it makes, means that we can anybody who can use Joomla can test it, can test features, can test bug fixes, can test new releases. And because we've got all constantly now, you can test the update process by switching your update channel to testing. And it will always do that night's release. So what about the concept of this no plan? Yeah, that if someone writes it, it will happen. We, obviously, there's a vague roadmap. If you look on the website, it, it says something like, to be a publishing platform for everyone. Yeah, that's great marketing speak, but completely meaningless. There's no vision really to it. It's just meaningless. It doesn't do anything. And what it meant was that developers who had really cool ideas to work on stuff were working on it on their own. And they're working on their own until they felt they had some big piece of code that they can share. And the trouble was, it might take them a lot longer to do it on their own than if they're collaborating. And it also can happen that People on this side of the room and people on this side of the room are independently working on the same big thing. And not surprisingly, by not talking to each other and one announces theirs, you go, I've been working on that for six months. What a waste of my time. So we're changing all of that. We've now got a long-term roadmap, and I'll go into some more details of that in a bit. With a vision for each individual release. So each individual release is going to have an aim to do X. Of course, if there's more stuff available, that's great. And that can still go in. But there's always going to be an aim for each release. And putting in pla by creating this roadmap, by publishing what we want to achieve in each release, hopefully that will encourage people to say, that sounds really cool. I want to work on that. And we can do it in a public way, in a collaborative way, and get the stuff done so much faster. So what about this roadmap? So the roadmap says we will have Joomla 3.4 in July. Actually, it says July the 15th, um, but when have we ever released exactly on time? Uh, so I'm just going to stick with the months. The aim for uh, Joomla 3.4 is to improve the microdata, not the actual code itself. The microdata code, and Alex is in here somewhere, um, is awesome. We just haven't really got the interface for it quite as awesome as the code. So the object for 3.4 is to work on that. To introduce the front-end module editing, which was part of the Google Summer of Code. I don't know if the person here did that. Nope. Oh, that's yours. So the object, we wanted to get that in for 3.3, but it didn't quite make it. So that's an aim for 3.4. 
We're also looking at doing integrating Composer. Um, I'm not going to talk about that. If you know what it is, it makes sense. If you don't know what it is, don't worry about it. <coughs> and the first stage of decoupling core components. So what does that mean? It means that for new installations of 3.4, web links will not be installed. Okay? <laughs> but if you want to install it, it will be there available in the installer as a, an official core extension. <laughs> so the concept is, this, this allows us to do two things. This allows us to, first of all, create a lighter core. And secondly, not, it's not saying that Weblinks is abandoned. Weblinks still exists and still available. And we'll be able to add more components, more plugins, more libraries as official core extensions without forcing everybody to install them, even if they don't need them. So that's the vision for 3.4. And again, in September, and that's, it should be September this year, so that's a mistake on the slide. Uh, in September this year, the aim is to decouple more extensions. So why are we doing Weblinks first on its own? Because actually, it's a surprisingly large amount of work to remove one extension. Because you've got the component, the modules, and the plugins that are all part of Weblinks, and you've got the language files. And at the moment, we're still discussing how best to deal with the language files, because the language files are part of core at the moment, and can you uninstall them, and what do you do for new installations of the language files? So for 3.5, the aim is to decouple more of those, and to move the sample data installation from the main installer to something that you do inside Joomla as a post-install. Yeah. A lot of web hosts have their own installer for Joomla and they default to using sample data. And how many of you have got clients who still have all that sample data installed? You know, and we get to change that. If you Google, welcome to the front page, <laughs> yeah, which is the title of the default contents of the first item, almost there's millions of sites have got that title. It may not appear on their page, it's because it's buried on about three options down that they never see. So they've changed the content, but that page title is still there. So that's stupid. We're going to change it. No. Uh, if somebody can work, if you can work out, I would personally love to see a way that you could uninstall the sample data. If somebody is brave enough to sit down and have a go at doing that, great. Um, a few people have tried in the past. Um, the reason why it's not there now is because they hit a roadblock. Um, but yeah, it would be great if we could. And who knows what else? If someone else has got something new and it's ready and people have had the opportunity to test it, that could go in as well. So just because there's a roadmap, it doesn't mean nothing new can come in that's not written down. It just means we're going to commit to getting these bits done. 3.6 for November, the aim is to do even more multilingual support and interna internationalization. And the roadmap itself goes right through to next year, February. The concept is to move Bootstrap to a compatibility layer. So that if you don't want to use Bootstrap and you want to use Foundation, you can do. If you want to use Bootstrap 3 and not get stuck with Bootstrap 2 because they stiffed us and didn't have any backwards compatibility, you can do that as well. But, it, so it, but for those of you who have got existing sites, it's not going to change anything. It's not going to break anything. It'll work as before, but there will be a, a new options to apply your own framework or somebody else's framework. If you want to know more about the roadmap, the link is kind of buried on the website right now. So if anyone was listening to that who can do anything, uh, make it more prominent and remove the old vague roadmap. Um, but that URL there um, hopefully has been set up and you can go directly to the roadmap. And that goes right the way through to December 2015, if I remember correctly. So if everyone's taken that photo of that slide, I can move on. <laughs> it may not be working right now, because someone might not have quite said. Oh. 
Oh, so we have to do it that. Okay, so in that case, if you do t.mn slash map, that works. If you change that from jum.la to t, t e e dot m n, as in my name, then it will work. So, how will this investment pay off in the future? Long term stability. That's one of the major, if you're building websites for larger clients or even smaller clients who have less budget, they want long term stability. They want less frequent major updates, updates that are going to change things and make them have to do stuff. They want the update path between major versions to be built into the core. We made a mistake in Joomla 1.0 or 1.5, leaving that update and migration tool to be an external product. Yeah? The updater is committed that it's to be built into the core in the same way we can move from 2.5 to 3 with the aim that we'll never be doing a migration again. Yeah? It's a lofty aim, and let's hope we can stick to it. That doesn't mean to say that if, if, when a version 4 or 5 comes out, it will be one click and everything just works perfectly. But it does mean that you're not going to be copying all your data from one website to another website and starting again from scratch. We're also aiming to improve those QA tools. The Travis, the Jenkins, the unit tests, the Compatch tester, all the stuff that allows people to test the work, to test the code, whether that's by automation or by manual work, um, and also with the new issue tracker, hopefully it's going to be easier for people to actually report issues without having to be a developer and jump through a million hoops that the JoomlaCode.org website forced you to do just in order to report something. Predictability is a big issue as well. People want to know what's coming. Yeah, they don't want this vague, wishy-washy idea of every new version will be better. They want to know what. What's going to be new in it? That's what, we look, that's what the roadmap is there for. With clear release dates and end-of-life dates. For those of you who don't know, the concept now is that every release will be supported for two years. So 3.4, scheduled for release in July, will have an end of life two years later, on July 2016, unless Joomla 3.5 is released in September, in which case 3.4 is now dead, upgrade to 3.5, and the end of life is now September 2016. So every time we do a new release, it adds on another two years. So you've got a minimum of two years for every release, but potentially it could be four years for every minor release. And please, don't check that your code works on the, late, on the, next, on the latest release when it's released. Check it before. That's why we have betas. How many of you have used a template from a template club and done a minor update to Joomla, and it broke your templates. And the template club then has to release updates. Yeah? A lot of people, a lot of users. Why? The template did something, but could they have fixed it beforehand? Of course they could. But no, they waited, and they were surprised. So please, test your code constantly against the core, against the nightly releases, and especially against the beta releases. We need to work better at collaborating with each other, to stop people working on new projects on their own, but to work together in teams. People work much better with teams. You work faster because there's more hours. You challenge each other and push each other further, and you can test each other's code. So we w want to make sure that we lower that barrier of entry to s make it easier for new people to get their code presented. One of the things that's happened since JM Beyond last year is that there's now been four code sprints, uh, two that took place in Europe and two that took place in the US on specific projects. I organized one for user experience changes. We got a lot of stuff done in that three-day code sprint. We got a bit, the aim is to do more of these sprints. And there are also now quite a few act, very active working groups looking at things. 
Specifically, um, there's one very active looking at that front-end development of moving the bootstrap to a bootstrap layer. So, got to do a lot more of that, and um, hopefully that's one of the things that's going to really help us in the future, pushing towards where we're going. Because where we're going, and what we all want to see, is continued growth of Joomla. Both in terms of people working on Joomla and developing it, but in terms of people using it as well. So that it can grow both our development skills and our business opportunities. Because it's great to have Joomla there as a toy that we can play with as a hobby, but it's also great if it can put food on our tables as well. And I'd rather eat steak every day than salad. Joomla has always been leading the way in changing the web. What do I mean about that? We were the first major CMS to, go, to adopt MVC and object-orientated programming. We were the first major CMS to offer multilingual website creation in the core. Yeah, WordPress have announced that that's coming in their next version, and Drupal 8 have now, uh, will also have multilingual. We've had it for years. We've also, we're the first CMS to offer two-factor authentication in the core, not as an extra, but directly in the core. And we've got to keep that. We've got to keep leading the way and showing that we can adopt new technologies as they come. Yeah, we were the first to have responsive web design out of the box in the core as well. So always got to be at that cutting edge. But at the same time, making sure that we're always using the industry standards. Some people have complained recently that the version PHP requirement for Joomla has gone up. We now have a requirement of a version that's actually five years old instead of six. Um, and people are complaining. Um, but why have we done that? Because we want to increase security. And the version of PHP that supports that library doesn't exist in one that was five years old. In six years old, only in one that was five years old. And we need to improve the performance of Joomla. And there's been lots of work over time done on that. And one of the areas to, we're looking at, and it's going to be done in the, this year's Google Summer of Code, is optimizing the SQL queries. Yeah, some of those queries take a long time. Some of them actually don't take a long time on a sample data installation. But who has a website with just sample data? When you start getting a lot of content, some of those queries are crazy. So that's one of the things looking at. And if anybody has a huge website with data that they're willing to share for the people who are working on this optimization, that'd be absolutely awesome. And if you, if you do, just uh, Chad, can you just wave? Yeah, just speak to Chad, and um, he can tell you about that. Because we really need some good, large data sets to work on for that. And of course, we want to continue to lead the way with interna internationalization of web software. I only speak English, but the web doesn't. The web speaks lots of languages. And we do a pretty good job in Joomla of keeping them modern, keeping it up to date, using, making people be able to build the website in their own language, but we can always do better. So how can we make it happen? How can we make all this stuff happen? Well, that's what the theme of JM Beyond is today, this weekend. If you look in your programs, you'll see that tomorrow afternoon, it just says, make it happen. There are no presentations tomorrow afternoon. Why? Because our aim is to do the stuff here. Last year, we had a really successful bug squashing event that took place in the evening after dinner with some beer, and some people started at 7 and finished at 8, and some people finished at 7 in the morning. And it was a great event, but we left it. It was an extra to JM Beyond. It wasn't the core part. We weren't investing in Joomla, in our own future. So this year, what we're doing is we've made it as a central part. It starts at 2 o'clock. It will finish when you want it to finish. If you want to work through to breakfast, you can do. If you want to finish at 6 o'clock and go get drunk, you can do. If you want to code and get drunk at the same time, make sure somebody tests your work. <laughs> but we're not just doing squashing code. There's also going to be groups of people getting the opportunity to sit down and do code sprints. 
Yeah? There's some work we need to do on the issue tracker. There's some work we want to do on a localization tool. And there's other stuff that we can actually sit down and do. Not sit down and talk. Yeah, we've done that in the past. We've had those discussion groups. Let's discuss what we're going to do with the ACL. Let's discuss what we're going to do with tags. No, this is about real work. Actually sitting down and producing stuff. But not just about code, but also about documentation. Yeah? If you're really into documentation, that, we're going to have the opportunity to do that. One group of people want to work on creating documentation at a user level for how to work on migrating WordPress sites to Joomla. Yeah? But maybe there's other things. Yeah? It's up to you, but we need to get that documentation done. Yeah, the documentation website, if you've not looked at it in the last six months, has had a massive facelift, facelift and a massive improvement. And it's now also translatable. There's the docu any, any documents on the documentation site can now be translated. So if you want to spend your time translating some of that documentation into Spanish or Latvian, you can do. And marketing, I know that there's a lot of people in this room who are professional marketeers. Yeah? They're experts in social media, in mailing, and all or in market research. That's your thing. The marketing group have got big plans for tomorrow. I won't steal their thunder, they can explain it themselves as well. So we've got something for everybody. Yeah? And we want to actually do it. Not talk about it, but actually do it. And if there's other things that you think of, we can do that as well. There's no limit to what we can do. But it's not enough to stop tomorrow night with that contribution. We have to keep going. In this room right now, there are 200 people. If everybody in this room was to contribute four hours a week, that's 800 hours of contribution. That's the equivalent of 20 full-time staff. Might be a little bit more in some countries where you have a lower work number of hours than we do in the UK. But, but that's equivalent. Can you imagine how much work we can achieve with that amount of volunteer effort? Four hours a week is only an hour, it's not even an hour a day. So it's actually not a big commitment, but it's a really productive one. One thing that I would personally love to see is those of you that have got Joomla companies and you're employing five or a hundred people that you dedicate one day a month for your company to, con to work on core Joomla contributions. Development, marketing, documentation, training videos, presentations that can be shared to user groups. I don't care what, but imagine what we can achieve if we all do that stuff. Yeah? If everybody just does, w if we just did one day, if you got all your employees to do one day in a month just on that, it's not a big commitment. And it's a massive improvement for Joomla. And a massive improvement for Joomla is a massive improvement for your business yourself. So you can justify it on a purely selfish reason. Yeah, you don't have to think you're being selfless and donating your time. You're actually doing it for yourself at the same time. And I want to end with this quote from David Bowie. I don't know where I'm going, but the one thing I can promise you is it's not going to be boring. <laughs> so the future of, JMB, of Joomla is in our hands, and it's up to us what we do with it. And I really want to try, hopefully by the end of this Jay and Beyond, everybody's going to say, I believe in the future. Thank you very much. <laughs>